Hey everybody, it is Corey from Unified Masters. So I wanted to come out and uh, do a little update of just how to work through um, frequencies in a very simple way to build out New Earth as I've gone through many different trials, many different tribulations, um, tried many different things and have found, stumbled upon, <laughs> stumbled upon a way of being able to do this that has really greatly um, affected my life in a better way. Um, a simpler way of being able to build out New Earth. So I'm going to invite you to smudge if you want to smudge with me. Just helping to clear and cleanse this connection. And as always, I want to call in the highest form of truth and the highest form of love into this connection and into this message um, for you to be able to unpack the information that you need in order to grow into and expand to the best version of yourself and give birth to the reality that you so desire. And a lot of this is now just holding that frequency within and then allowing everything else to expel that is out of alignment with that frequency. And what I mean is not by intentionally letting go of certain things in your environment, but this is all in the beliefs and the concepts and the structures that reside within that are blocking you from being able to enter your new reality. And so as we are as we are ascending, you know, I've done so many different ways of being able to build out realities or have tried different ways. And a lot of it for me um, in my journey was the um, the the set point, the arrival of X, Y, or Z into my reality is what will thus induce the joy. That's when I will seek the the compassion and the comfort, and it's still reaching for something external to provide that within. And as I've, you know, everyone's got their own trajectories when it comes down to the soul's journey and um, the arrival of New Earth and the arrival of how they get there and what they do in order to transition through the dimensions um, and to transition into the reality of their liking. Well, for me, I, once again, was, was always dependent upon, well, when I land here and then I set an expectation that when I landed in a certain zone, that's when I'd find joy, that's when I'd find compassion. Um, so for instance, you know, uh, once I find the love of my life, then I'll feel whole and fulfilled. Once I land in that new home and I'm living by myself and I'm able to pay, pay the rent, that's when I'll be able to take a breath. Um, I will feel unified once I feel whole within, you know, all these things, um, reliant upon the destination, reliant upon the end result to provide that frequency for me or that emotion, whatever. It's all frequency, so let's just say frequency here. Well, for me, what I've grown to realize um, through observation and through expansion and really landing at this mindset of knowing how this is, is working is a very simplified process and I want to be able to, to help you shortcut to an easy way. Um, now granted, if this doesn't resonate and it's something that, that you know, you feel like you need to make it more complicated, by all means, go for it. Um, I definitely uh, rejected a lot of information in the beginning because for my soul's growth and my soul's evolution, I had to go through that and realize, okay, you know, it was, that was obviously a way that wasn't working for me and there's an, there's an easier process to be able to do this. And a lot of that now is just holding that frequency in our heart and then allowing everything in the way of that frequency to clear organically. Um, the way that it is right now, the energies are so supportive of this. And we've got, you know, three portal days here in December. We're in December 2019, right before 2020. Um, so the, the energies here and the level of shadow work I've done and that we see streaming through the collective of the rising consciousness, it is a lot simpler now to clear. So we don't have to dive into the shadow work of finding the limiting belief and then um, exploding it or, or dissolving it through, uh, through you know, really deep shadow work of writing and journaling. Now, if that's something that you still want to do to reflect, great. But what I'm saying is that for someone who started out with the really deep shadow work of in, you know, sitting down with you know, someone unpacking my problems, um, write, doing a lot of writing, a lot of deep, deep soul searching, I've reached this point now through the evolu evolution of working with energy and the evolution of the ascension process that it doesn't have to happen that way anymore. A lot of this now is just holding that frequency within every single day, intentionally holding that frequency of which you want to see and then allowing everything that is not aligned with that to be expelled from your system. And so how I do this is, is waking up every morning and setting the intention for the kind of frequency that I want to hold. 
Um, for me, it's it, it was always, um, I kept it very, at first I kept it very detailed for the kind of frequency that I wanted to see. So like, you know, I wanted to have my soulmate or, or my twin flame. Um, you know, I wanted to have a car. I wanted to have, you know, a house in Hawaii. Um, the, these are the masters that I wanted to work with. I wanted these kinds of teachers, things of that nature. But what I started to do was I started to recognize that for me, my, as I'm, as I'm traversing um, the conscious and the subconscious and I'm recognizing and getting closer more and more what I want, a lot of it is just a frequency that I'm seeking and then how it looks needs to be thrown out the window and how it's gonna arrive is gonna, it needs to be thrown out the window too. Because as I shift and I change and I ascend, so do my beliefs. So what I believed a month ago, two months ago, even yesterday, shifts because I'm multidimensional now. I can see things from multiple angles and multiple perspectives. And so because of that, my beliefs are constantly forming and shifting to the highest vibrational truth for where I'm at because my frequency is ascending at a rapid rate now. So thus, I need everything to be moldable with my frequency. The one thing that will, will never be moldable are the frequencies of the emotion that I'm trying to experience in my day-to-day -day reality. So what I do is I look for like joy, compassion, unification, love, okay? Four frequencies that I can hold on to. I've experienced joy in my life, I've experienced love, I've experienced compassion, and I've experienced unification to a certain degree. And so what I do is I drop that into my heart and I hold that frequency and I allow that frequency to settle in there. Now what happens though is as we are expanding, so when our, when our light body ignites, okay, and we start to expand more and more and more, what happens is there is a contraction process. It is, a, it is the process of being able to hold that frequency because what happens is we can drop that frequency in, we expand to a certain point and what it does is it ignites limiting beliefs, it ignites programs within us, it ignites those dark zones in our field, those dead zones that have been sitting there for a long time and what happens is we expand, we ignite, those fears or those things get triggered and we collapse. We collapse because it's time to resolve that and to let it leave our field. Once, once it gets exposed and triggered within, okay, what it will do is there's a process of dissolution out of our field and this is where we collapse because we have to feel that program, we have to feel that belief to resolve it and to let it leave our field. And so this is where we expand through holding that frequency and then we contract. And if you contract, the mindful thing is to not judge the fact that you're contracting, but recognizing that that is a beneficial part of the creation process. If we look at the collapsing of galaxies, the collapsing of stars, everything collapsing upon itself, it needs to happen for the explosion to ignite into a new universe or into a new reality which you're trying to birth. So the idea is, is we hold that frequency as long as we can once you feel the contraction, allow the contraction to happen and then keep inviting in that frequency because the idea is, is we want to maintain it as we are birthing our new reality. And so what we do is we have to be intentional with our creation. For so long, we were our, our lives and our souls were guided upon other beings doing things for us. And when we take our power back, we now have to become more intentional with what we are creating and what we are holding within. This is where we take our power back, is by being mindful of what frequencies we're holding on to. And if you're still holding on to older, lower, denser frequencies, that's a part of the expansion process. You will expand, you will ignite your light body. This was the visual that I got the other night because this is what happened to me. Is I was doing some expansion exercises where I was igniting my light body and I could feel my cells shaking and dancing. And what happened was it got to such a point that it triggered something within me, led to my collapse yesterday. And I was collapsed for um, a good majority of the day until I got called to go out to go to a site um, that I, I live by that is um, a, a portal zone that I'm very um, connected to. And I'd been feeling a call for a few days to go out there to balance the energies and to reconnect the trees. So I went out there and I decided to just kind of unify once again. This is part of the process of the contraction is when you contract, you have to now as you're dissolving the limiting belief, for me, what I have to do is I have to unify with the universe, which means I have to go out into nature, I have to connect with the trees, connect with the animals, and I have to go be an angel. Because as soon as I unify, I remember the frequency that I'm holding within, joy, compassion, love, and unification. I hold it in my heart again, I'm downloading that frequency, and I get to watch it being reflected back into my reality, thus creating that connection point again of being able to rebirth that reality. So I contracted. 
I felt these fears and these programs coming in and I dissolved into this like fourth dimensional meat sack for about, I don't know, maybe five or six hours where I was just playing out themes, it got really dark. And you know what, the thing was is that I recognized that there was stale energy that was being dissolved out of my field and I had to step into motion to resolve that and then to allow those frequencies to come back within and to be able to hold that. A lot of this new earth build out and building out these new realities is being able to find that vibration that you're seeking, hold it within, and then hold it as long as possible through the process of expansion and collapse. And this is how we start to become intentional with our creation is that we were so dormant for so long because things were working through us to be able to create the reality that we desired. These were the controls. There was energetic influence that was working through us that was affecting the thought process, that was affecting our vision, affecting our clarity, working through our pineal land and through our heart to create um, you know, the different scenarios that we landed in. Control, enslavement, um, poverty, struggle, so on and so forth. And so the idea is, is to allow these frequencies to come in now, especially as we are dissolving those programs and we're dissolving um, those controls. What happens is now that we are taking control back, we are the ones that are inserting the ingredients for what we want to see. And so what I do is I hold that frequency and then I allow everything to dissolve naturally. And in sleep state, this is another thing you can do, is that, is that if you're trying to land in 5D or you're trying to land in 7D, um, if you were meant to be there, okay, you would be there. The idea is that there is timelines, individual and collective timelines, that are blocking you from arriving at that destination. And once again, the destination is not something external that you arrive at, it is an internal, <laughs> It is an internal frequency that you hold and then you land in that destination. And so what I do now is at, at sleep is I command space for my sleep to dissolve those timelines, to dissolve those programs, and to release everything that is blocking me from the joy, the compassion, the love, and the unification that I seek. And so I do that and I find that I wake up in the morning in a lot better mood. Um, sometimes I still wake up like a little uh, grumpy um, because especially as we're going through astral training school, which there is astral training school is real. Um, there are, there are um, ways of being able to grow in new earth and to learn um, a lot of valuable lessons and get a lot of valuable insight in the astrals. Whether you are consciously remembering everything that's happening or you're waking up just knowing that there's a lot of resolution that's happening. What I do is I, when I wake up in the morning, if I'm feeling a little funky, I immediately step into a morning routine to be able to embody that within, that compassion, that joy, that love, that unification. And then I allow that to sit in my field, dissolve any cross threads or any purposes that are out of alignment with that. And then I hold that as much as I can throughout the day. Now, if you do contract, once again, if you start to contract and, and collapse upon yourself because you are working out a program or you are dissolving something within your field, that's okay. Don't judge it, that's a part of the process of evolution, is that we learn to be able to hold this frequency um, as long as we can. And sometimes this frequency is like hot potato for us. Um, think of that, the, the, the visual that I got the other night that I'm just remembering right now is it's like, it's like having a, a glass of water, okay? And your water is the frequency of what you're trying to hold within so you can see it externally into your reality. You pour the glass and then the idea is you gotta keep your hands steady as you're holding that glass throughout your day. Now, we start to run into things, triggers and different things throughout the day that is gonna knock our hand and make us shaky to be able to spill out some of that water. Well, what we start to do is we start to, through the breath, and through mindfulness and through recognizing that these things are being dissolved out of our system and, is that, and they exist is to not attach to the fact that it's happening but to not judge yourself if you spill any water out. All you simply do is grab the water and refill it up and keep holding on. And this is the strength training exercise of holding a vibration or holding a frequency within and allowing that to arrive consciously and allowing anything and everything in the way that is blocking you from that, from that arriving or appearing into your reality allowing that to dissolve naturally. And so yes, sometimes this will allow opportunity for um, relationships to fall out of your spectrum, jobs, things of that nature. And this is where when you are doing this process of holding this frequency and asking consciously through clarity and through the veil of what's holding you back from achieving those things that you so desire, 
those things are now going to be illuminated because as, as your light body is expanding and you are illuminating brighter, what you are now doing is you're now casting light on the shadows, the, the roles of those, those beings, those players in your reality that are blocking you from what you desire. Um, and now what's, what's interesting is that it can change. Like there are some people, some relationships that had to vibrate out of my spectrum. A lot of them now vibrate up. And this is where I make a conscious decision every single day that when it comes to my personal relationships, you are either vibrating up or you're vibrating out, plain and simple. Because what can happen is I'm now no longer going to diminish who I am or, or I'm no longer going to wait for you to catch up. I'm gonna let that happen or organically, naturally, if that's meant to happen. Um, and this is an interesting process because we go through these frequency tune-ups. As we upgrade, okay, as we upgrade and we start to stand firmer in our truth and our, in our truth and what we want to see in this world when we start to rediscover who we are at a soul level and what is in alignment, what's out of alignment, using the tool of discernment to be able to understand what our morals and our ethics are on a day-to-day on -day basis, whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical, or whether it be emotional. What happens is as soon as you stand in your truth, Okay, you now offer the opportunity for someone to either unconditionally love you and for them to adjust their frequency to meet yours, or they're gonna vibrate out. And this is where we start to see more ideas of conditional love and unconditional love. So there are, there I've, I'm finding more people have relationships that are unconditional love with conditions. And so what we start to do is we start to dissolve those conditions to get down to the raw, authentic version of that unconditional love, which is the allowance of that person to be who they are and loving them for who they are, regardless of how they shift and change. Because a part of a big part of this process is that as we are evolving and we are dissolving more layers, we're discovering more truths within ourselves, which means that we start to embody different things, which is that we are now getting back to our natural soul imprint. So the person that you knew three months ago may be a completely different person now. And this is where it can really test whether you entered that relationship with unconditional love or with conditional love. Because once that person changes and their frequency shifts, you now be able to step back and allow the natural, let, let the frequencies get into connection naturally. And a lot of that is through creating space for things to just kind of get back into the sway of things, and then re-meeting and seeing if it still sways. And if it doesn't sway and it's just too much work, that's when you know maybe it's time to dissolve um, that relationship and, and make peace and, and tie that off and then be able to step into what's new for you and what you want to create for yourself and what you want the universe to attract. A lot of this has just been building up that frequency within and then allowing it to arrive. Through the allowance of that arrival though, at some point you need to step out into your reality and go look around and see how it's changed. And this is something that's been big for me is I've been doing so much internal adjustment and then I'm just like sitting there waiting for things to come to my door. Well, no, a lot of that is that I've done this frequency adjustment and if I wanna see the change, I need to let my energy do the change, which means I have to go step out into the world and go be an angel. Um, and that's something that fills up my soul um, is doing things like going out and just having a friendly conversation with someone. Um, and that's something that I did yesterday. I've been for quite a little while since I landed in San Antonio. Um, been really kind of staying to myself because I've been telling myself like, this isn't my home, this isn't my home, this isn't my home, my home San Diego. And uh, it's a weird process that I had running, but it's my process, I had to go through it. And then I recognized, wait a minute, I live here now. I, I live in an apartment in San Antonio. This is my home now. It's time to go let my energy do what it needs to do towards balancing um, the grids and towards changing other people's lives. And this is a, a huge part of the process of service that I've landed in is I can come in here and I can create content and I can touch hundreds of people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis by creating this content. But there's also a bigger difference when it comes to shining my light into this world. And a lot of that means that I don't have to go out and just um, and go shake everyone's hands and, and you know be this, this guardian angel that goes and saves lives. My energy alone will be able to affect so many other people as, I'll, as I allow my energy to step into that grid, to step into that, that matrix, whatever we wanna call it, and allow my light to create the effect and the balance that is needed in that, in that area. So if you're feeling, feeling called for some reason to go to a certain area and you really don't know why, it's probably because your energy needs to go there in order to help balance um, and activate other people your light will balance and will activate um, and you don't have to do much other than just sit there. Um, and this is that um, the butterfly effect. When we look at um, action and reaction when it comes down to our energy body 
is that sometimes all you have to do is go to a park and sit there for a couple hours reading a book and just allow everything that enters your field to be activated. And that's where we get to really learn to play with the energies and how we build out new realities is we hold this frequency within, but we also have an opportunity to be able to go out and to be of service. And that service doesn't mean that it's gonna be very varied for everyone. But sometimes it's just having meaningful conversations with someone. Sometimes it's going out and buying someone a cup of coffee. Sometimes it's tipping, um, you know, tipping your waiter um, a little extra and, and sharing that abundance. Um, or it's just going out and just simply allowing your energy to affect the area in a positive way and not in a negative way. And so this is some things that I've been doing with the New Earth build out and also really being mindful of the expansion and the collapse as being two integral parts towards ascension. The, the, the expansion needs to happen until we expand to a point where we start to trigger off those programs and those things to become active in our field again, give them the opportunity to clear and that's through the collapse. We hold the frequency and then we go back out and we, we expand until we get to a point where we hold that expansion every single day and then there is there's a mini collapses where we collapse for a second but then we immediately expand again and it's a dance and it's a process that we are growing and learning through some people have this process down others are still learning it for me i'm still trying to figure out how my energy body works and how i sway and flow with these energies on a day-to-day -day basis and then how can i have a positive effect on my environment through the energy that i hold within and that's by embodying that frequency and then going out into the world um, which is very hard when we've got a lot of fear programmings, we have a lot of root chakra issues, we have a lot of safety concerns that we've experienced in our life, is the idea that we've done enough internal change and internal restructuring that we are safe as long as we use our tool of discernment, okay? And that is by recognizing those areas and those patterns and those people and those places and those things that are gonna knock us off course and being mindful of that and being really tuned into our intuition and if we feel like it's time to get up and go, listening to that emotion and getting up and, and leaving. Um, if you feel like you need to go to a, a certain environment and you need to help balance the energy, go there and do that. That's what happened yesterday. I knew that I was called to a place and I was struck with a lot of fear. A lot of my own internal programming of safety concerns, things of that nature. But as soon as I landed at the site, it felt off. Like I was like, oh, things feel very unbalanced there. Well, I knew going into it that my energy was meant to go balance out that grid. And so what I did was I sat and I got into the breath and I tuned into my heart and I allowed the energy to do what it needed to do. Things balanced, I felt comfortable, and then I started to walk around and started to, to, to do my grid work. And that's part of the call of, of what I do, which is the, the many layers and dimensions of light work for me, one of them being grid work. Um, and, and, and making sure that my area is in alignment um, because it not only helps me out, but it helps out the collective and everyone gets activated from that. So anyways, I wanted to just do a little update on New Earth Build Out and just various things that have been happening that I've been experiencing and really wanted to discuss about holding that frequency within and really practicing and training ourselves to hold the frequency of which we choose to see in alignment with 5D Earth, 5D, better time, 5D or better timelines, and how we can better hold that frequency on a day-to-day -day basis by being intentional with what we want to see in the world and what we want to see for ourselves. Do we want to struggle? Do we want to be abundant? Do we want to be filled with love? That's entirely up to you. And this is what happens when you recognize that you're a creator being in a body is you gotta be extremely intentional with your creation because if you aren't intentional, something is gonna work through you, granted, something will work through you to create for you. Um, as we know, the universe doesn't like void. Um, it will always fill it up with something. Um, we don't wanna waste space. And so if you aren't um, intentionally creating your reality, something will step in and work through you to create for you. And this is where we have to be very intentional with what we're creating, um, be very mindful of our thoughts and being mindful of these things that are running in our system, but not attaching to the fact that they're running, just recognizing it is unattaching, being the observer and allowing it to dissolve in its own time. Um, so that's all I've got for you guys. Much love and respect to everybody out in the Webiverse. If you haven't, please click subscribe. Um, much love and respect once again to everyone out there. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. And with that, I will see you on the other side. Namaste.